This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. Workouts for the NFL Combine begin on Thursday. It is finally here. NFL draft season is in full swing. We're going to break things down from a betting perspective because, yes, in a decent number of states, you can bet on the NFL Combine. We're going to break that down with Eric Froton of NBC Sports getting his read on this year's Combine and spots where he sees value at FanDuel Sportsbook. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and FanDuel Research. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a managing editor of Digital Digital media for Fandor Research. Joined here as mentioned by Eric Froton. Check him out on Twitter at CF Froton. Find his work at NBC Sports, where he is the lead college football analyst and the 2023 FSWA College Sports Writer of the Year. Eric, congratulations. That was just announced today. How you doing? Yeah, not just today, like an hour ago or so. We're, <laughs> we're hot off the press here, but I'm very excited. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm just very thankful from a uh, a combine props perspective from here in Indy that FanDuel is pretty much the only entity giving us anything out there for props. So thank you to FanDuel for just for anything. It is a, a very barren prop season right now. Yeah, I know it's not as robust. It has been year, years past. It can be frustrating. I have personally never bet the combine. So for me, maybe it's like self-preservation that there's not allowed out there but that's why i have you here today eric because i don't know how to bet the combine so i get to ask you your thought process and kind of how you bet things i think that'll be a fun conversation so looking forward to going through that and also talking draft with you your first mock draft went up on nbc sports uh last week i believe so we'll talk about that and uh where you see some value in the betting markets right now as well but first a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to covering the spread wherever you get your podcast tomorrow we're talking nba nhl tom vecchio we got some NASCAR coming up on Friday, some EPL as well, all right here in the Covering the Spread podcast feed. So search for Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcast. And if you like what you hear, leave us a five-star rating as well. Get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because right now new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 150 bucks if your bet wins. Bet on all your favorite NBA players and teams with quick bets, live same game parlays, exclusive props, and more. Just visit the FanDuel app and shoot your shot. FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NBA. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. First online real money wager only. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued as is non withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1 800 Gambler or visit fanduel.com. Slash RG in Colorado, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Kentucky, Tennessee, Virginia, and Vermont. Call 1 800 Next Step or text Next Step to 53342 in Arizona, 1 888 or visit ccpg.org chat in Connecticut, 1 800 9 with it in Indiana. 1-800-522-4700. Visit ksgamblinghealth.com in Kansas. 1-877-770-STOP in Louisiana. Visit mdgamblinghealth.org in Maryland. 1-800-GAMBLER.net in West Virginia. 1-800-522-4700 in Wyoming. Hope is here. Visit gamblinghelplinema.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support in Massachusetts or call one 877 Y or text Open Y in New York. Now, Eric, we're going to talk about some combine bets here in a second, but if we got you here, we might as well talk draft as well. Uh, your first mock draft, as mentioned, did go up this past week. So a couple markets up as of right now for this draft. So any bets you want to lock in before we get to the combine, which can be a bit of an inflection point when it comes to information on the NFL draft. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, in terms of the draft, it, it, again, it's been fairly sparse compared to what we've been used to. I would say that um, usually the week before the, the combine, we start getting a heavy flow of combine specific props related to 40 times where you'll get a, is player, you know, is Jaden Daniels going to run a 4.5 or not? Yes or no, over, under, pretty standard. Yeah. And you had a you know a whole range of books offering those up right up until the time of, of when these were being run. That has not been the case at all. In fact, I don't know if we're going to get any. I haven't seen any out there across the spectrum. But luckily, we do have FanDuel out here throwing some of these markets up, having some of these 
you know, early, uh, you know, draft pick ones. I think you're kind of settled here. This started off at plus 900 for Caleb, you know, at open, you know, right in that range. It has since bumped, I want to say, pretty much the last day or so up in that, this, uh, excuse me, the minus 900, now the minus 1600 range. And there's pretty good reason why. There's all kinds of jockeying, talking. I mean, he is going to be the number one pick. That is full stop. It is essentially you're, you're throwing in a CD for two months. You're happy with <laughs> the turn that you're going to do. Is there going to be a risk? Are you going to be parking it for a little while and assuming that risk? Yeah. Point, the problem is, you know, you could have got that 900 or, you know, maybe even 1,000, uh, you know, minus 1,000 odds. Now you cannot. So you are betting from behind. You get a settled line here that is not really in your favor. I, I don't think it really makes sense to bet, bet that. And you're really just kind of laying it out with anybody else. It, it's it's just too much of a long shot, I think, to really dive into here. Caleb, it is what it is. It's been settled. We have seen some movement for the number two overall pick. You mentioned William shortening for the first overall pick. Number two has been a bit more fluid. Uh, Drake May was minus 170 or so at one point. Now down to minus 125. Jaden Daniels, the benefactor there, up to plus 135. In your mock draft, I believe you had Drake May going second overall. Do you think that minus 125 has lengthened enough where he is now a value? Or was that a tougher one for you to nail down that second overall pick? You know, this, I mean, like you said, this is this is shortened a little bit here. And uh, I do like that at least we get some some fun volatility with that number two pick market. I'm, I'm team Drake May. I, I like this coming down. And, you know, I, I I wouldn't be against it. Gosh, most of the props I'm betting in season for these college football props, they're going to be at that minus 125 anyways. I, I, I'm accustomed to seeing that. Right. I'm even seeing minus 130, minus 135, minus 140s. They will beat you, you know, to a pulp to try to keep you from beating them because they they do. They lose pretty significantly, right. as everybody knows, on these these prop markets. So I'm not afraid of that minus 125. I'm not. And I just think if you're looking at projecting a QB, if I'm looking and I'm the the Washington Commanders, do you want this this fifth year? player in Daniels. Yes. Has, is he fully formed? Yes. Has he been through the fire? Absolutely. A lot of those 20 yard plays, explosive plays that he led the league in and had as many as anybody in the last decade, they're coming on the ground. And this is a guy with a 210 pound frame. I've had the pleasure of watching Jaden Daniels this past summer at the uh, elite 11 finals, Redondo beach, California, where he was a, uh, a counselor alongside Michael Penix. I got to watch both of them throw every day, go through the pro drills, do it all. I like the clean release. He's really progressed as a passer. He's a nice overhand release. It's clean. Uh, made some excellent throws downfield, but a couple of absolute superstars on yeah. the outside too. Brian Thomas, Malik Neighbors, unassailable in terms of their talent. They're both first rounders in my estimation. So there's questions in that sense. And with Drake May, Everything. He's young. He's 21 years old. So he's a third year entry here. He hasn't been through what Daniels did. You know, there's still a lot of projection and the downfield passing ability. He showed it this year. I, I had the pleasure of watching him against Clemson and also against Oregon last year in the Holiday Bowl twice. Um, he is a fully formed, rocked up QB. His dad is a UNC basketball legend. His, his brother is a basketball legend. I am a basketball player. I always appreciate the basketball players <laughs> translating to football. I always think that we're the best athletes in the world for our size. Yeah. And we can do anything. And that's a proof because he is nimble in the pocket. You know, he has the big arm. He has the downfield acumen that he has proven that he can do it already. He can throw downfield. I know it. He still has room to grow. Give it to me. I feel great about the Drake May, uh, you know, number two pick market. All right, so May minus 125 right now at FanDuel Sportsbook. Two goes second overall. Not a lot to prove for Williams, May, Daniels at the Combine. None of those guys going to throw there, but there are a lot of players, Eric, who have plenty to prove this week down in Indy. Now, you are there, so you actually get to talk to people on the ground in Indy and kind of gain some intel. When you're talking to people in Indy, are there any players specifically you want to learn more about, try to gauge 
how the league views these guys, whether it be for your mock draft or for when placing bets on the draft? Sure. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, just anything that is a potential piece of information, anyone you meet that is part of somebody's camp, because you got to remember the ecosystem out here is you're getting trainers, media, agents, coaches, GMs, players, ex-players, you know, um, it's it's a whole, I mean, it's a sight to behold at around 2 a.m. at prime. Wow. Like you're watching the most <laughs> famous people in the world right. of, of the NFL just getting loose and it's, right. it's fun, you know, I, I, it's, it's a good time. So I, I always enjoy coming to the, the combine, but you never know what you're going to run into. So I, I want to be open. And I just want to be open to whatever you can give me. But if I can get some info, you know, I want to, I, I, I tend to be a little more towards the skill positions because they tend to have more of a market. Um, and, you know, they, they tend to at least have a little more buzz surrounding them, you know, so I, I tend to kind of want to know more about that. And you know, being somewhat fantasy oriented, you see my college fantasy football CFF site, yep. you know, I, I know those guys a little bit more intimately. So I have a, a more formed opinion, whereas I'm, I'm going through the defensive guys kind of in that sense. So I would say uh, running backs. I want to see what some of these big running backs are running because Unlike last year, that was the Jameer, you know, outside of Bijan, Jameer Gibbs, A Chain, Spears. These guys are all right around two bills. These aren't 220. You know, this class, Trey Benson, Audric Estime, um, Marshawn Lloyd checked in at 217. Uh, Jalen Wright, he didn't participate in the senior bowl, was invited. He's here. He's like 210 to 212, 215. He's, you know, above that 210 threshold. And he hit, I think, 21.6 on the gun, second fastest in the SEC this season. Um, so I want to see kind of what speed those big boys put them and agility, not just the speed, you know. Um, I'm thinking for projecting draft stuff, I want to see how they're moving. All these guys in a line, because that's the other thing you're getting, right? So people want to talk about the testing, but what I really look at, what I like, is being able to sit there at Lucas Oil Stadium and watching these guys in the line drills. Yeah. And they're right next to each other. How are their hips? How do they move? You know, how are they backing up? How are they going forward? How are their hands? You know, you want to at least watch the fluidity and the movements of all these guys and you get them in a lineup. So I definitely think overall in that sense, that's important. Um, on the wide receiver side, uh, the, the big wideouts. It's a big wideout class, unlike last year. I'm telling you, uh, up and down, the the running backs and the wideouts last year were small. This is supersized. The Keon Coleman's, you know, this is a guy who has proven that he can make absolutely acrobatic catches. His body control is tracking. I mean, it's amazing stuff, you know. And and he returns kicks and he takes hitches and he gets manufactured touches on those quick slants, and he can he can body people. But the full route tree isn't there. And the question about whether or not he can separate at 6'4", 215 at the next level is very real because we've seen graveyards of these big receivers right. that we had hopes for not be able to separate. And once you're going up against the big boys, you know, there's, there's too many excellent cornerbacks. They're going to be able to body up to you because they're all looking for the big Kenyon Mitchell, you know, this year types. And the Patrick Sartains, you know, so they're all coming for you. So I would say the bigger wideouts of Keon Coleman, Adonai Mitchell, um, Troy Franklin is thin and tall. He's like 185. He's got to blow you away, you know. Yeah. And at the same time, too, Xavier Worthy, the questions about his hands at Texas, okay. He goes in, he, he blows everyone away with a sub 4-3. Well, guess what? That that. Ex, those jets you see on on paper on on screen, they could, a lot a lot of the mistakes are going to be forgotten. I think. Yeah, and Xavier Worthy currently the favorite uh, to lead all receivers in the forty yard dash at FanDuel Sportsbook, and I want to talk to you about those markets in a second. So we've got the forty yard dash, we've got bench, shuttle, three cone, a lot of different markets at FanDuel, and I'm curious what process you go through when you're trying to predict which players will excel in those various workouts. Well, you know, in previous years, it would just go based on the individual player and what their line is based at. However, with the emerging markets and the fact that 
our friends at FanDuel and and across the spectrum wouldn't uh, wouldn't wouldn't profit too much because it's an information driven market. It's yeah. not a performance driven market, as you know. Like, there's a lot more variables when you're trying to control you know a game. Good luck to everyone, you know. With just someone running a forty time, you know you can you can. There's a way to game the system a little bit. I respect it. Okay, I get it, guys. That being said, with the way I'm looking at it now, look, we want speed. We want the top guys, the top dogs, right? And if you're looking at the overall market, if you're looking at the wide receiver market, which are pretty much in the two of the juiciest, you know, you got tight ends in there too. You know, you want to give them their respect. With the overall market, if you look at the trends over the last five years, the top, top runners – weren't above 200 pounds. It's only been one guy over 200 pounds of either sub 4-3 or the fastest overall, and that was Tariq Woolen, and that, you know, from USA, and he was just an absolute freak of nature, and at 205, he went out and blasted a sub 4-3, and, and bless his heart, that was a harbinger of things to come because, you yeah. know, he's he's really done well in the NFL since then. He was a, a very reasonable pick, you know. He didn't He wasn't a first-rounder. Um, really helped his status though and his profile he's the only one you know if you look at all the rest of them you know and you go back and you chart it all out and you look at the Ruggses and um you know Kalen Barnes and then last year was, was DJ you know Turner from Michigan those guys are all sub 190 you know so controlling out for that factor I'm eliminating you the big dog right for everybody here is going to be um, the Texas Tech cornerback Tariq Wooden, and or whatever you know exactly his name. He's not even like he's not even like a big deal player. As a player, he's not particularly special. Like you don't go and look at there. It Tyler is. Owens, yeah. Tyler Owens. Like what is that guy's name? He's not like somebody that you're going and saying, oh yeah, <laughs> first round pick Tyler Owens. You know, right. showing up on the blocks. I don't know. He's just one of those speed you know special guys, and he was. He ran, you know, a sub routinely, I guess, was running 10, five hundreds, which is, you know, Katie bar the door. That's big time, you know, and was down in that 10 to six range. I think I've quoted. I mean, we're talking a chain level stuff, which is elite, elite, elite. But hey, this guy's at the senior bowl and he was there. He weighed in at 207. There hasn't been somebody at 207 to be cracking that level. We talked about. Even Woolen, he was 205. And, and and Owens was 210 when he, you know, we check in. He was walking around at Texas Tech. That's what he was billed at at Texas Tech. So he even came in a little light at Senior Bowl. I mean, I don't know what to say here, but I'm skeptical. I'm very skeptical of Tyler Owens. And frankly, the opening odds, you see what's here on the screen, it's plus 400 for him to be the fastest. He was a lot higher to open. Wasn't he? Do you? I, I don't know if you have that, Jim. But if I remember correctly, he was in the plus one seventy five range. Yeah, that has since closed at the gap. I actually that's that's interesting because I have placed a couple of wages here that have moved since okay. I put him in. So we can talk about that one. The number three guy, Anthony Gold, Anthony Fields of Gold, Oregon State, right? Dangerous return man, but small, like five eight. You know, 170 kind of mighty might, but that's what we're looking at here, guys. You know, we don't want too big. I'm fine with 170 range. Down with that. And return kicks, return punts. Totally dynamic player for Oregon State, but was, you know, a, a Swiss Army knife type. You know, a manufactured touch guy in that you want to get him the ball early and let him go. His profile's right there. He was trending. I want to say I got him at, at 10 to 1, you know. Down to seven, you know, plus seven fifty is something to think about. Worthy too, I want to say earlier on. I think he was in the seven fifty eight hundred range because Owens was such a prohibited favorite. We're noticing the gaps narrowing, you know. And if you look at who is one, the fastest uh, player, you know, moniker the past year, you only you only shop in in two outlets: wide receivers and DBs. Yeah. All right, and chances are. It's probably going to be a cornerback too. You know, DJ Turner was kind of a hybrid. He was a safety type, but come on, he was a slot. He played everywhere. Um, I also think Roman Wilson is, you know, if we're going long shot, long shot, 
he's rumored he could put up one of the best, um, you know, and that's another mark we'll talk about. He could put up one of the best short shuttle or three cones ever. Like he's just an absolute, when it comes to being an athlete, he is a legitimate freak. So I believe in him. Nate Wiggins is another guy uh, for Clemson cornerback is projected to be a first round. I think he'll be a first rounder extremely fast. In fact, when it comes to the MPH timing, you know, the uh, real analytics and, and what have you with their, their tracking movement, he had a play against North Carolina where Omari and Hampton broke down the sidelines and he was coming where he was, you know, blocking against the wide. He's, he's coming off of it. Hampton's got like a 10 yard head start. And you see him coming from behind, and he has another safety that he's – I think it's Makuba that he's running ahead of him. He is running so fast that he actually, like, pushes Makuba out of the way, continues to go and <laughs> run, catches up to Hampton on the one-yard line, pops the ball out, out of the end zone, and saves a touchdown, touchback, they get the ball and it comes back the other way. It was truly one of the plays of Clemson season that they tracked him. He was at like the 23 mile an hour range. Whew. That's insane. But yeah. he's a big, you know, he's not a small corner either though. Sure. And that goes against that 190. Don't want to go too far over that. Maybe, maybe a tippity top at the, uh, at the one, um, it should be that 195 range, but you know, Kenyon Mitchell is 196. He went in at the Senior Bowl and the early odds. I don't know if you can bring up the cornerbacks. I'm curious to see what that looks like. Mitchell's to, 35 overall uh, to be 35 the overall. Runner. Okay, because he I know he ran like allegedly a, a verified four three, very muscular, like he's a blocky type yeah. frame. Um, but I, you know, the the cornerback odds, or excuse me, the D back odds between him. And uh, and Owens were pretty intriguing in the in the early going. I'm, I'm curious, just kind of what that that looks like now. In yeah, the so right now, uh, Owens is still the favorite to win among defensive backs. He's yeah, plus one ninety. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mitchell is plus four eighty, and then Wiggins is plus seven fifty. So it sounds like maybe yeah, yeah. What are you thinking about that with where it currently stands? You know, Melton was at plus a uh, plus a thousand. He's he's bumped down. So did I think Andrew Phillips has his odds have gotten longer. Whereas Wiggins has, as stated, I think he was uh, maybe plus 900. So he's, he's gotten tighter and Mitchell, I think, I think he was 450. I think he's gone up a little bit, you know, and, but it goes to show with Owens, despite the fact that he ran a 10 to 600, which is superhuman. I mean, that's insane. The fact that he's 207 is, yeah, it's, it's making his odds a lot longer. You know, I, I'm thinking Wiggins might not be a bad take here or Mitchell. It's a, it's kind of wide open. I, I don't think, I don't think the, the fade Owens is a bad play here. Yeah. And with how rich the track record is of betting against guys at heavier weights, and we're going to get literal weights and all these guys. So I think that that is, Beneficial too. That's probably why we've seen this movement. If you had to guess, are you thinking the weight thing is the reason why we've seen Owen's stranglehold at the top kind of get loosened here as the week has gone along? Sure, there's definitely something to that. Yeah. And I'm looking here too. I'm going through the the Senior Bowl stuff. Wiggins, what Wiggins didn't test, didn't weigh. He wasn't at the Senior Bowl apparently, at least for what I'm seeing here. Um, I'll be very interested to see what he weighs in and see what we got there. Uh, that could go a long way. You know, the lighter he is, yeah. The, the better I'll feel about that particular market. But hey, you know, I mean, there's it, it's it's potential edge and at five to one and seven and a half to one, you know, not bad. You, you only have to deal with the D-backs. You don't have to even right. deal with Xavier right. Worthy or, right. or any potential guys uh, you know, over there on Anthony Gold, who's yeah. obviously pretty up there in the overall front. I think if, if I was attacking a market, that's a pretty good one for, for where it is at the developed point it is. Okay, let's so check out the D-backs. Mitchell, plus 480. Wiggins, plus 750. Potential routes for betting there. I want to talk about this receiver class, though, because it's a very fun class overall. Obviously, that's not just because of the speed, because like you said, some of these dudes are rocked up, and they're like legit forces of nature. So they may not run as fast, but it's still a fun receiver class. And right now, Worthy leads the way, plus 260. Gold is plus 440. Any value for you 
Or maybe this is where you want to go Roman Wilson potentially as well in the receiver specific market. Any value for you here? Oh yeah. I've, I've already thrown down on Wilson and gold uh, right away as stated, you know, I, I looked at him in the overall, but where I went, where I could get down whatever I could, you know, by a, I might be clean shaven, but every once in a while I wear a beard like you, Jim, <laughs> um, uh, with gold. Yeah. I got him. I want, believe he was plus 800 upon open. And I know that Wilson was definitely plus a thousand. That's where their, their numbers were best. Obviously it's, it's going to be longer and, and you're going to have to deal with a lot more variance in those, um, you know, the cornerback markets, but I've always been, I want to whittle it down as much as we can guys, you know, especially when we got to play long shot odds. Great. Everyone loves the longer show. Great. I want to whittle it down as much as we can whittle it. You know, I want a profit. I don't care what the, I want a profit. That's what I want. (laughs) You get it, Jim. Like I'm a props guy. I want to isolate one-on-one. I know what I want when I'm going and doing my college football props. And that's a winning formula. I've done it four years straight at 67% plus. That's not some pie in the sky. The guy who did the the San Francisco thing. Um, (laughs) So Anthony gold and Wilson, I'm personally invested in. I, I, the, the gold market's already gotten so much tighter because he does. He's got some verified, like he- serious, um, you know, stuff on tape in terms of his his times. And like I said, this is an information market and it's getting tighter. I There's a reason why it is. Still, I mean, Worthy is, I, I took him for the number. I liked his long odds as the fastest, you know, against Owens. Um. He is the favorite here, but man, you watch Xavier Worthy on tape and you see it. He is extremely fast. This is a fun market. Um, I think I think Franklin's a little too long to do sure. it. Like he's six three. Yeah. I think he's just a little too much. I tend to favor guys who you know the six foot and, and under crowd. Uh to my detriment, I am six three. <laughs> and Leggett, Leggett's six foot. He, he was listed at 6'3", 227, measured in at six foot and changed like six foot wow. and three eighths and 222. Hey, six foot 222, you, you want to be the fastest wide receiver at the entire combine? Listen, take, check him off the board. <laughs> Don't even, that is a long shot. Go further down the board if you're going to go long shot. Don't even look, Xavier Leggett. That is not an option, period. But I said, uh, again, I, I mean, I feel I like Wilson. I like gold. I think I think there's some value on those two in this market. Chances are you're not gonna be able to get a ton down. Yeah. But that is where I, I did commit the most. Worthy is is a legitimate favorite, don't get me wrong. And and that's not bad either at plus two sixty. I mean, if you're spunking around, it's I I get the market. If I'm gambling, which I am. I laid off worthy in this market because yeah. I want to, I wanted to stretch it and have a little fun. So, and the market has moved in your favor. Always a good feeling for sure. Doesn't always sure. lead to profit, but Hey, it's always a good, good to see that the market is on your side as well. Any other bets you want to highlight here based on the odds we currently have for the NFL combine? Oh, geez. I mean, I, th- there really isn't too much. I'm hoping as Saturday approaches, because I feel yeah. like Saturday is really the big day. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Let's go down to running backs if you want. Let, let me just let's take do a it. quick look at running backs. If you don't mind, I'm, I'm curious to see what that market So Jalen Wright actually shortened during the show. He was plus 175 about 10 minutes ago, we'll plus we'll 165 now. Jalen, Jalen Wright had the second fastest uh, time for running backs in the SEC to only Ulysses Bentley, who is still in college. Uh, according to, I think, Real Analytics. Juar Jordan is another guy's straight line speed. The thing is with Jalen, he's 210. 210? 212? All right? He's fast. Plays extremely quick in pads. And, like, as far as a as a runner, yeah, I'm, I'm in to Jalen. Absolutely. Juar Jordan, though, buck 85. You know, 5'9", five, 5'10". Five, you watch him. He, You know you know who he, he goes to Louisville. I don't want to, like, I don't want to – Jersey copy or anything, but like the way he runs and, and his usage reminds me of Tutu Atwell. Then you run straight, you get that ball, and you run straight, my friend. Yeah. And you see that hole and you run straight through it. Not a lot of the wiggle, not a lot of the dance, but that man can run in a straight line. Not bad. 
I do have uh, some money on Bucky Irving. I had him at plus 850. He's at plus 700 now. So it wasn't not a big move, but like a little slight move with Bucky. Again, another guy. He's a buck 85. And you watch the way he runs. I know he's already been. I think he's already banked a sub 4-4, four, four, if I'm not mistaken, over the course of his you know testing. And you got to, again, whatever. Whatever that means with the right. weird testing stuff. We're going to get it. lasers. I mean, you're going to have NASA scientists on right. this, okay, <laughs> with, with the NFL. So we'll figure out if these numbers are real. I look at all of them with a grain of salt. But, you know, 5'9", 185. Again, he's fast. You watch how he darts. He has that Devin A-chain, you know, cornering, that, that quick acceleration skill set. He can ramp up fast. And this is a ramp up sort of a, you know, a a event. So I do like that. On the other side, Trey Benson, he hit 22 on the gun, um, extremely fast, had a – he was a Oregon transfer, What was there right before Bucky, tore up his knee, went over to Florida State, had a ridiculous 22 at four and a half yak. I mean, 63 yards, missed, missed tackles, just a, a phenomenal 2022. was good this year, but 220 pounds again. Good luck hitting 220. The only one, Garendo, is intriguing. He has a legitimate track background. He's another big guy. He's probably 215. You know, but like if we're going dark talk horse, if we're going for the big boys, like at, at plus 1600, I, I think Daniel Jeremiah floated him as a guy who's like, hey, if I'm floating something out there, sure. You know, Isaac Garendo at the plus 1600, Daniel Jeremiah is a very plugged in guy. And I, you know, in terms of, Former Wisconsin back for Garendo, also at Louisville with Jawar Jordan. They have a profile and a type for Brian Brom, you know, over there. Um, so that's a, a dark horse, dark horse. Do not even think about Braylon Allen. Stop I saw that at 25, and I was like, if, if he if he wins this category <laughs> at 230, 240 pounds, like <laughs> printing press. Stop <laughs> it. That's not happening. Okay, no. that's not happening. I couldn't picture Blake Corum after like his complete lack of breakaway ability. I can't. I those short legs. No, no, <laughs> simply no. Um, uh, and that's that's about all I got Love down it. here. That's that's about all I got. I would say, yeah, Garendo's the the longest shot. Man, you know, right, right there, right there with that that Juar Jordan and, and Bucky Irving. I think Juar Jordan is should probably be the favorite. Yeah, it's me. I think I yeah. probably favor Wright. And keep in mind with Jalen Wright, one more thing: he has been training, did not participate in the Senior Bowl. We don't, you know, he, he weighed, did not participate. Um, had like a an upper body, I believe, ailment of some kind that restricted him. So like he's been training, he's been doing everything. He, he's gonna run here. I'm not sure yeah. what kind of contact he will do, but I mean, from what I understand, he's gonna run here or have you. But hey, listen. This is a guy, Jalen Wright, that didn't participate in the senior bowl drill right. because he is banged up in one fashion or another. Right. The body sings when we're talking about at this level. You know, your body has to be in harmony when you're running. Your upper torso is important. You want your abs, all of it, you want it in harmony. If he's not taking contact, if, I mean, we see it on film, but... Maybe there's a potential. Say maybe he doesn't run. Just yeah. I think it's it's there considering he didn't do the senior bowl. Right. What does Juar Jordan become right now? Right. What is yeah. what does Bucky Irving become after that? You know what right. I mean? And there's all of a sudden their odds skyrocket and just everything shrinks and, and becomes that much smaller. And with, with him being big and it being injured and not participating, I think there's a lot of variables there where I I wouldn't I wouldn't take the favorite at plus one sixty five. I need better odds on Jalen Wright, even though I like him to the NFL. He's a top three back for me. I really think he's got incredible skills and that he can run. Yeah, different conversation we're having. 
So it sounds like based on what you're saying that the shakiest favorites, that's what we kind of want to identify is spots where there may be an overvalued player at the top. Uh, sounds like the markets where we have that the most would be running back with it with Jalen Wright and then the overall market and the DB market due to Tyler Owens. So it sounds like those are the two markets you're most interested in because of the possibility those two guys may be a bit overvalued based on weight, health, et cetera. I, absolutely. I think that's very fair. Okay. Well, that is Eric Froton. Eric, have fun in Indy. Enjoy. Uh, I'm sure you'll have a, a great time out there. It was a blast talking to you. Uh, have fun. And hopefully, we'll talk to you again here on this show very soon. Absolutely. Looking forward to it. Thanks for having All right. You find Eric on Twitter at CF Froton. Check out his work at NBC Sports as well, where he is the lead college football analyst. I am on Twitter at Jim Sonis. You can check me out on threads at Jim.Sonis and find FanDuel Research on Twitter at FanDuel Research. I want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to you if you're betting the combine. We'll talk to you all tomorrow to break down some NBA and NHL. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 